This is Trade Flow News, bringing you relevant news and insights from around the world. Trade Flow News, enabling trade for SMEs and economies worldwide. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. Chinese refiners are slowing down Russian crude purchases in December and paying lower premiums in the face of imminent European Union sanctions and uncertainty surrounding the G7's plan to cap Russian oil prices, trading sources said. The slowdown in trade is causing Russian crude supplies to build up, weighing on prices, as China and India have become major buyers of the oil since the Ukraine war broke out. The European Union will ban Russian crude and oil products imports on December 5 and February 5, respectively. There are, of course, many concerns and much confusion regarding to the upcoming price cap, but people think the December arriving cargo should be safe, to buy, a China-based trader said. Oil prices fell on Monday, dragged down by a firmer US dollar while surging coronavirus cases in China dashed hopes of a swift reopening of the economy for the world's biggest crude importer. Brent crude futures were down 91 cents, or 1%, at $95.08 a barrel by 13.01 GMT after gaining 1.1% on Friday. WTI crude futures fell 95 cents, or 1.1%, to $88.01 after advancing 2.9% on Friday. US dollar strength appears to be weighing on oil and the broader commodities complex this afternoon, said Warren Patterson, head of commodities strategy at Ing. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. Deliveries of Ural's oil from Russia to European ports showed no sign of declining in the first 10 days of November ahead of December 5 when EU countries will impose an embargo on seaborne Russian crude, according to Reuters calculations and traders. Russian Ural's oil destinations and shipments in early November were the same as in the first half of October. About half of the cargoes went to Asia and the other to several European countries mainly those where Russian companies own refineries, data on Refinitiv Icon showed and traders said. India remained the largest buyer of seaborne Urals oil during November 1-10, purchasing around 600,000 tons, while China purchased 200,000 tons over the period, Refinitiv data showed. OPEC on Monday cut its forecast for 2022 global oil demand growth for a fifth time since April and further trimmed next year's figure citing mounting economic challenges including high inflation and rising interest rates. Oil demand in 2022 will increase by 2.55 million barrels per day, BPD, or 2.6%, the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, said in a monthly report, down 100,000 barrels of oil per day from the previous forecast. The world economy has entered a period of significant uncertainty and rising challenges in the fourth quarter of 2022, OPEC said in the report. Next, we have the top news in metal markets. Copper prices hit near five-month highs on Monday on optimism about demand in top consumer China after officials moved to shore up the country's property sector and ease its strict COVID restrictions. However, selling spurred by a firmer dollar, higher inventories and profit-taking saw copper prices later retreat. Benchmark copper on the London Metal Exchange traded down 1% at $8,409 a tonne at $13.56 GMT from an earlier $8,600 a tonne, the highest since June 23. London Metal Exchange rules on daily price swings were breached on Monday, traders said, with offers to sell nickel above the 15% limit in volatile trade placed for the first time since the March debacle spurred the exchange to impose constraints. Disorderly trade on March 8 pushed nickel prices to a record above $100,000 a ton. The LME cancelled all nickel trades on that day and suspended the market for more than a week. When the market reopened, the exchange imposed price limits of 15% up or down and ordered its members not to submit any orders outside those boundaries. We will now look at the top news in the agricultural Indian farmers have planted wheat on 4.5 million hectares since October 1 when the current sowing season began, up 9.7% from a year ago, the latest data from the Farm Ministry showed on Friday. The Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers' Welfare will keep updating the provisional crop sowing figures as it gathers more information from state governments. In India, wheat is mainly produced in the northern states of Punjab, 
Haryana, Uttar Pradesh and the central state of Madhya Pradesh. The planting figures are also subject to revision depending on weather conditions. That is all for today's news on commodity markets. Stay tuned to Trade Flow News as we continue to provide you with more updates. We also invite you to follow us on Twitter at Trade Flow News, which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop to receive information from there.